Welcome to another edition of the Effective Living Series 2023 on the theme 2023 Starter Pack. This series is focused on helping you start the year well and end strong. We're focusing in this third week on what we call professional priorities. So we'll be talking about things through your professional development as a leader and as a person. My guest is no stranger to the series. <laughs> she is the founder and lead, I believe, for Busar Africa. That's right. Takawori, always great to have you. How are you doing? I'm well. Happy New Year. Many, many happy returns. I mean, Happy New Year to you as yes, well. Yes. So we're talking about leading self in the new world of work. That's our topic for the, 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 the series for this, this morning. And Takawori will be, as ever, taking us through the, the slides. I think this leading self concept I first heard from you. I'm not sure if I, because yes. sometimes we're talking about yes. leadership. Yes. And you sort of brought up this idea about leading self. Yes, yes. So maybe you should patent it. I should, but others have used it. But it's something, you know, you've, what you've probably heard me say is yes. you can't lead another until you lead yourself. I believe, I believe so I've heard that. So it always yeah. starts with leading. Mm. But we're, we're talking about the new world of work. Yes. So let's start from there. What is the new world of work and what should we expect this year? And yes. So, so a couple of things. The, the first thing is not the good news. Eh? Mm. And then I have been listening to you all for the past couple of weeks mm. and everything that's happening in Ghana. Mm. One can expect mm. that the new world of work, not just in Ghana, but mm. elsewhere means continued uncertainty mm -hmm. and job insecurity. Eh? Okay. As we talk about a global recession and the kind of economic turmoil yeah. we're seeing here in Ghana. Eh? Mm. So that's one thing, uncertainty mm. and job insecurity. The second thing we're seeing as a result of that job insecurity is increased stress hmm. and mental health challenges associated yeah. with this type of insecurity. So that's another facet of this new world of work. Mm -hmm. But what we're also seeing as continuation from the time of COVID mm -hmm. is continued use of remote working and increasingly hybrid working. Mm -hmm. So it's not totally going away, but you're finding increasingly companies at one point, they'll be all remote, then they'll yeah. do a hybrid. Do you see what happened to Data Bank recently mm. where they're like, all of a sudden we'll do remote working. <laughs> Sometimes you have some folks doing a combination yes. of the two. Yes. So that's going to be a continued factor. Especially when customers are angry. Ah, so you see that flexibility, home. better work from home where you can ensure yeah. security. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The other thing you're seeing in this new world of work is an increased use of geographically dispersed workers. Okay. Yeah? So not having everybody sitting in a team in Accra, you might have some in Kumasi, or increasingly what I'm seeing mm -hmm. is you might have a team in Accra and another team in Johannesburg and another team in Nairobi. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And later I'm going to talk about the opportunities in that. Yeah? So okay. it's geographically dispersed workers, mm -hmm. yeah? which means that the new world of work is also about distributed teams working remotely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So your team of people may not all be sitting in the same location with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're also seeing, and what you can expect in 2023, is continued use of digitized operations mm -hmm. uh, um, or digitalized operations in the world of work, where because, again, of the tough economic times, you are seeing many companies are seeking to become more efficient, cutting costs, so really taking as many things as they come on, as many things as they can online. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because of what's happening, and I think again, because of the economic crunches in so many markets, you're finding that many companies are again going to need to think of new business models, yeah. think more creatively. So the new world of work is also a place where there's a premium put on creativity, mm. agility, adaptation, innovation. Those were words that really came out in 2020. Mm. Yeah? Mm. They're going, you're going to continue hearing them yeah, mm. in the world of work. Yeah? Mm. We will also see an elimination and possibly redesign of workplaces. Okay. Yeah? So increasingly, again, in the spirit of cutting costs, managing mm. costs, mm. many companies are going to be thinking, hmm, if we're doing a form of hybrid working, do we need this entire space with all these offices? Can we be a, be a little bit more creative? Can we do some co-shared space mm. working? Those kinds of things. Huh? Mm -hmm. But now the, the last thing you will see is creation of more work opportunities mm -hmm. than employment opportunities. And again, mm -hmm. I will speak to that a little bit later in terms of what I mean. Okay. So in summary, Bernard, the new world of work that we can expect is one of two things. It's one of turbulence, mm -hmm. let's not lie. It's one of turbulence, but it's also one of opportunity. 
That's very interesting. It seems a lot of negatives, but you still found a way to always to put opportunity there. I was I was going to ask. This doesn't seem too good news. It, it looks. No. It looks. Overall, you know, it, I would say that the the new world of work huh, mm. is going to be a tough place to operate in. Mm. But if mm. you're strategic. Mm. It can also be a space of opportunities. And I'm hoping the principles mm. I share can be one that can enable people to not just survive, mm. but also potentially thrive. Mm. All right, let's, let's talk about the principles then. You said if you can adapt those principles, adopt those principles, then you, you would survive and thrive as well. So tell me what I need to do in this not so pleasant reality <laughs> that you're painting. <laughs> yes. So how do you lead self? Those are three mm. principles I'd love to share. Okay. Right? The first is around getting grounded. Mm. Now, the getting grounded is what, as I said, really enables you to stabilize yourself mm -hmm. during turbulence. Okay. The second is, I say, get connected. Now that's where you're starting to reposition yourself mm -hmm. to take opportunity of the, to take advantage of the opportunities. And the third is to be future ready. That's also an ability to take advantage of the opportunities. So those are the three principles, and mm. I would love to go through so each. So get thing. grounded downwards, get, get connected, connected, and, and then be, be future, future ready. ready. I, I like the directional dimension. Yes. So let's, let's get into grounding yourself. Okay. How so, do you do that? So this principle of getting grounded mm. is about being resilient. Okay. I mean, we've talked about resilience for the past couple of years, and mm -hmm. it's going to continue to be a key factor in this new world of work that is increasingly insecure. And, and here's some tips in terms of how do you get grounded. The first is what I call bring out your anchors. Mm. Now imagine the metaphor of a ship mm -hmm. or a boat, and you're in turbulent waters, which for many of us, the workplace will be here. Yeah? You put out your anchors, your anchors are what stabilize you as a person during crisis. Mm. Now, for some people, it might be their faith. Mm. For others, it might be family. Mm -hmm. For others, it might be a support network. Mm. The point here is each person needs to understand what stabilizes you mm. during crisis. And that's what you need to prioritize now. That's your anchor. Mm -hmm. Bring it out, focus on it, mm. prioritize it. I huh? like that. So first step, bring mm -hmm. out your anchor. Mm -hmm. The second is plug, I love the boat metaphor, huh? Stay plug the, boat. the leak in your boats. Okay. Uh, again, I imagine stormy waters mm. here. Huh? Mm. What we find is during periods of stress, mm. Mm, uncertainty and anxiety, unfortunately, not the best of us shows up. Mm? So sometimes, in other words, we're not at our best often when we're really under the crunch. And I've seen it in many workplaces where people are feeling insecure about their jobs. They might be restructuring. What starts to happen is you might find people really showing terrible behavior huh? in terms of undermining others, trying to show that they are the best. And so what's important at this time is mm. that you need to understand what are the character flaws mm that somehow become more prominent mm -hmm. when you're under stress mm -hmm. and that might even become a liability mm -hmm. in the workplace. Mm. Huh? And so it's important to be clear on these. Remember, I think um, this week when you were talking about, the week where you're talking about emotional awareness. To me, this is about self-awareness mm -hmm. and managing self. Mm. Because if you're in a workplace where there might be job cuts, if you're in a workplace where they're thinking, who do we skill and who not, you need to be at your best. Huh? Mm. But if you're not careful, the anxiety and the pressure, mm. huh? those, the, the leak in your boat is what will show you up not at your best. You mm. won't be professional. Mm. So that's what I call plug like the, the leaks, leaks in your boat. In your boat. Right. These are the parts of you mm. huh, that could bring you down. This is the Effective Living Series. We're talking to Taka Wari in our third week. We're looking at the world of work and leading self. She's told us the not so good news, but the good news is you can do something about some of this. So ground yourself, get connected, and do other things. So she's just given us two points under grounding yourself. What else do we need to do to ground ourselves? Invest in your health and well-being. All right. Uh, and, and as part of this Effective Living series, I think you've talked quite a bit about that. And I actually like the way you emphasize that in your first week. Yeah. Because indeed, you find that 
because we're all going to be under a lot of stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. this is where it starts to show up in your body mm. and your mental health. Mm. And yet this is not the time that you want to have a crisis, mm. an emotional, mental, or physical health crisis. Huh? So mm. it's important now to be proactive. Take mm. the advice you learned in the first two weeks of the Effective Living series and put it into action. Huh? Okay. Um, the other tips is having a growth mindset. Your mindset is going to be very key in terms of how you ground yourself. Mm -hmm. And the last one I would say in terms of how you ground yourself, because this is about resilience, is about diversifying your income. Mm. And I know again in the series you'll be talking about um, your finances. Huh? Because we're finding that resilience mm. <laughs> during this world of work Definitely. will come from understanding that your income mm. cannot come just from one place. At all. Yeah? So that, those are some of the tips around grounding yourself, becoming resilient. So the onus is on the individual. The mm. owner, it's not only on the individual, but in this case we're saying, how can you be proactive yourself mm. Huh? Mm. To, mm. to make sure that you're grounded mm. when the storms come mm. as they will and as they have. Great. Let's yeah. talk about getting connected. So now, getting connected, this mm. is the second principle, and now this is about, now you're grounded. Mm -hmm. It's about how do we seize opportunities mm -hmm. in this new world of work. Huh? Mm -hmm. The key message here is that this is not the time to stay in your corner mm -hmm. with the friends and family you've known since I don't know what kindergarten. Huh? <laughs> Opportunities come to those with a wide range of quality mm. relationships mm -hmm. or community. Let me say that again. Opportunities come to those with a wide range of quality mm -hmm. relationships or community. Mm -hmm. yeah? So how do you get connected to develop these kinds of relationships? Mm. One is definitely about making time and investing in a wide range of relationships. Huh? So mm -hmm. it's getting out. Huh? It's about the alumni networks, associations, rotary. Huh? Mm. The second is about strengthening the quality of relationships okay. you have. Huh? So not just the amount. No, it's not just the amount. The it's actually the quality. Eh? Mm -hmm. I find it's, it's about being in touch with people before you need something from them. Mm. Hmm? Too many people, they're like, hey, you're calling me. What is it you want? <laughs> huh? So how do you check in, call yeah. someone when you don't want anything? Yeah, that's true. How do you help someone huh? mm. constantly, or even before they're asked, you realize yeah. somebody's in a need. You introduce them to somebody. You connect them to someone. Mm. So I often say, manage your social capital or rather, let's say, don't manage your social capital the way we've managed our economy. <laughs> Meaning, don't go into debt. <laughs> oh, where, my God. Where people owe, you, know, you owe people so much. Huh? Rather, make sure you're always in the red. Mm. Give, more Give more than you're constantly asking for. I like that. For, huh? I like That's that. what we mean in terms of managing the quality. Huh? Uh -huh. The oh, oh, no man, nothing. Well, it's okay to owe, but make sure huh, <laughs> that you've given a lot so you that by the time more. I come to so you... more people owe you. Thank you. Than you more owe. people owe you. That's exactly I like, it. I like That's that. That's exactly it. Be helpful. Be yes. generous. Yes. Yeah? Okay. The last one about being connected is being visible. Oh, right. This is the time to be visible, and it can happen in different ways. Huh? Mm. If you work in a big organization, mm. visibility is about raising your hand to volunteer mm. for opportunities where you're visible to those who matter. Mm. It might be doing extra work, doing things outside of your JD, mm. uh, volunteering for this committee, but at least it means, you know why this matters? It means when decisions are made, they're like, ah, I remember Bernard. Mm. He had a chance to show us that he's really good at this and this and this. Let's oh, yeah. put him on that. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not in a big organization, another mm. way you get visibility, naturally, is social media. And I think too many of us are not leveraging social media in the right way. Eh? Okay. And often I say something like LinkedIn is mm. a really good platform professionally, mm -hmm. since we're talking about professionally. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, and a way you can do this, make sure your profile, I always tell people, make sure your profile in LinkedIn is up to date. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's capturing your strengths. Mm. And if you want to be known for a particular thing, write more about it. You'll start to find that if you're writing about a particular thing, the algorithms will start to connect you with people in that you're growing your network. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So that's the second point. The yes. connections must be rooted. And I like the analogy. Let's talk about being future ready then. Yes. So being future ready. This is the last principle. Mm -hmm. How do you do this very practically? First is understand 
the mm. trends in your sector. Okay. Huh? So if you're engineering, if you're in banking, if you're in the media, understand what is happening in your sector mm -hmm. because you're regularly reading. So for instance, mm -hmm. I would be regularly reading Harvard Business Review, McKinsey, because I want to know what's the world of work in leadership mm -hmm. uh, and in the world of work generally. Yeah? So right. that's understand the trends in your sector, what's happening in the future. Mm -hmm. When you're clear about that, then you can invest in reskilling mm -hmm. or upskilling to remain relevant. And right. let me distinguish the two. Huh? Upskilling is where you're getting additional skills in your current role. Okay. So for instance, in my role, leadership development, coaching, mm. I realized in 2020 to upskill, I needed to increase my digital skills. I needed mm. to get really good at training online. Mm. So on Zoom, on Teams, that's an example of upskilling. And often mm. it's about digital skills. Right? Okay. Reskilling is where you're like, mm, I've studied the trends, not much happening here. Maybe I need to start thinking about a whole nother line of mm -hmm. work. And so <clears> then <throat> I start mm -hmm. acquiring additional training okay. or opportunities to learn about that. So that's to be future ready, you might have to do that investment. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, people need to recognize that mm. they may have to pay for it themselves mm -hmm. because companies, the way I see things going, may not have as many resources mm -hmm. to do that. And, and again, for many people, the resources they put aside mm -hmm. for this investment in self may be locked up or saved. <laughs> so sometimes you have to get creative. Okay. Huh? You might not have lots of money around to do that, mm -hmm. but there are lots of free resources online. Huh? Mm -hmm. Next one about being future ready is continue to invest in soft skills. Okay. Yeah, these are still critical, and I know Michael will be talking a lot, a lot about more that. about what are the skills yeah. ready. Yeah. Another one, Bernard, is the new world of work means you have to throw out the idea mm. of a linear career path. All right. Too many of us think, okay, I'll start here, then I'll mm. move here. Then, mm. No, increasingly, what it looks like in terms of our professional journeys, mm -hmm. it's more of a zigzag. Mm. Huh? And what they're saying is 50%, this is a statistics I, I read recently, 56% huh? mm -hmm. of candidates report applying for jobs mm. outside their current area of expertise. So over half of people were applying for jobs that they had never done before, but maybe they had stud they went mm. and upskilled or reskilled essentially mm. to mm. be able to do that. Yeah? Mm. So throw out the idea of a linear path. And the okay. last one is really in terms of being future ready, go beyond thinking of employment opportunities mm -hmm. to work opportunities. And okay. then what do I mean by this? Many people are finding that Having one job mm. is either too insecure or doesn't pay you enough to live. So instead, they have different work streams. Mm. So maybe I might be on a platform like Fiverr, okay. where I offer my services as a graphic designer. All right. On the other side, I may also have another side gig where I'm doing some jewelry thing, and I put that on Instagram. Mm. On another side, I might do a little consulting where I'm doing, mm. giving people advice or coaching. So that's what we call the diverse work mm -hmm. opportunity. So mm -hmm. that's a mindset shift, mm -hmm. that to be future ready, start thinking not necessarily of this one job mm. but these different work wow. opportunities this is still effective living series 2023 on the theme our year starter pack week three we're focused on professional priorities my guest is takawori who's with the busara group very beautiful um file <laughs> she, she gave me busara africa uh, leading self leading others with wisdom so actually your 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 is it your, your tagline? Yes, yes. It, it goes right into the topic. Yes. Leading self, leading others with wisdom. Yes. And I like the African, is it an African design? The Adinkra what? symbol. Now I'll test you. This Which one? Adinkra symbol is that? Um, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I good at it. It's something about knowledge. Huh? When you oh, know, okay. you will know. What is it in tree? Is it something do you have? or something? <laughs> Yam sapo yes 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 the bedroom banners something <laughs> anyway so nice. we, we've been told three very important things um, get grounded get connected and then be future ready so let, let's conclude with a few more things to do some practical uh, ideas and how to tie everything up what yes. what do we do next yes. and of course if people want to contact you so I understand getting grounded take roots downwards first and then get connected. And I actually think it's an order. You get grounded yes, first yes. before you don't start by connecting. 
So people just go on networking yes. meetings and there's nothing. So you get grounded first yes. because the tree takes root downwards first yes. before it spreads out. Yes. And then now that you're connected, you are future ready. Yes. So this turbulence, how long should we expect it? And what, what are your thoughts in conclusion? Because these are very difficult times, at least yes. financially and economically and socially for a lot of people. Yes, they are. Yeah. It's interesting, Bernard, when I looked back at the last times I've been with you mm. <laughs> on the Effective Living series, mm. the conversation has been about resilience mm. and turbulent times. And here we are again. Mm. So I think what this is telling us is mm. that we are now living in times where we, ca we should expect the unexpected. Okay. So let's not think of an end to this. Sure. Let's imagine that the none of us could have imagined COVID. Mm. None of us could ever imagine that our economy My could Lord. get to this level. My Lord. We couldn't have imagined it. Huh? Mm. So let's expect mm. the unprecedented. Huh? Mm. Let's prepare ourselves. And I always say that therefore, when if we expect the unexpected, there are two things you can mm. do. One is indeed to strengthen your resilience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's going to continue to be a thing that's grounding yourself. Mm -hmm. The second is about preparing yourself to seize opportunities always in crises sorry mm -hmm. to say but there are always opportunities mm -hmm. so that's how you seize the day okay mm -hmm. so in terms of practical what do i do next i just listen to this i'm inspired I'm, i want to get going what should i do do write a list give busara africa a call yes yeah, so or what do i do so so a couple of things if you are indeed huh, ready to move from just listening mm -hmm. and talking to action mm -hmm. if you're ready to get support in terms of concrete tools courses, support network. And if you want to be part of a community mm -hmm. of others who are navigating this space and trying to learn from each other, then join our recently launched Africa Leaders Circle. Huh? Africa Leaders Circle? Africa Leaders Circle. Okay. It's an e-learning community mm -hmm. that brings leaders across the continent together mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. learn and share how to navigate this new world of work. Mm -hmm. But we also do that through courses, tools, and discussion forums. Huh? Mm -hmm. So visit our website, busara-africa.com. Mm -hmm. To, to learn more. Yeah. I mean, the, the focus of the show has been on the individual, but for companies, um, will, will this apply? Because I, I feel in, in, your, in your preamble, uh, the assumption is a lot of companies will try to make profit and therefore they'll do many things that may not necessarily inure to the benefit of the individual, which is why you're saying get grounded, get connected. But if a company wants to survive these times, and this is a bonus question, well, how should they be thinking about organizing themselves because I know that they will say well you also need to cut your uh, your costs you need to but is that really the way to go because I feel if you're more people centric if you are more if you make yourself an employer that people want to work with give people food to eat and things sort of people high quality people may want to come to you give flexible working hours so in when you are discussing this from a company perspective how should we think about a company also wanting to do well in these times? It's interesting. The three principles actually apply to a company. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, eh? mm -hmm. I would say first get grounded. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. When you're going through resilience, when you're going through turbulence as a company, what grounds you? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. often I will say what grounds you in a company during turbulence is your culture, okay. mm -hmm. where you have a culture of caring because mm. who's your core it's your employees unless you're selling widgets huh? mm. often it's the human beings that make yeah. up the company yeah. so where you have a culture of caring for people taking care of their well-being mm. being empathetic and we've talked about the kind of leadership you need during crisis yeah. showing empathy that and even if you can't because what tends to happen is when you mm. do that and you're grounded in that type of a culture even though you may not be able to pay salaries for a period of time, mm. people will understand mm -hmm. that it's not just about you and making yourself and, and profits, eh? but it's saying that if we're trying to stay in the market, yes, we have a mission, but we put our people first. Mm. So grounding yourself in your people and your culture, 
becomes a powerful way of stay. Otherwise, everybody will jump ship because mm -hmm. they're like, ah, the culture here is every man or every woman for themselves. Each man yeah? for himself, yes. God for us all. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I would say that's the first thing in terms of getting grounded. Mm -hmm. Getting connected. connected. It's the same thing because as mm. a company, we talked about this when COVID came. We said mm. one of our things a company does to become resilient mm. is you cannot work on your own. You're starting to say, mm. what are the types of partnerships okay. I need? What mm. are the types of alliances, consortia mm. I need to be in to seize opportunities in the market? Mm -hmm. huh? What are the relationships maybe with service providers, mm -hmm. with my finance? All of those relationships help you mm. as a company to navigate difficult times. Mm. Being future ready, again, you can yeah. see for a company yeah. saying, all right, where is yeah. this market going to? Yeah. How may I have to adjust mm. my business model to remain relevant, mm -hmm. huh? to continue to be useful and helpful to my customers or mm -hmm. my clients? So interestingly think, enough, they also apply. I, I think this is, this is amazing. So even though this topic was more for the individual employee or person working, they do apply to companies yes, as well. Yes. Because I feel a lot of companies are struggling yeah. and they, 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 they have no idea how to manage themselves. Yes, All right. Yes. So in terms of Busara itself, where can we find you? Did you give us your website? Did yes, you give us so your it's Busara dash Africa Busara dot dash com. Africa. But connect with me on social media. Huh? If you okay. just even Google my name, Taka Awori. T-A-A-K-A -A -A -A, yes. Awori. Do you respond to your messages? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, busy. yes. If you connect with me on LinkedIn, I will definitely okay. respond to that. Do connect yes. with me. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you Google my name, our website will come up. Get on Facebook. We are also on Facebook as well. Mm. Yeah. Just finally, you've been in people development and corporate like you help companies, how, how rewarding is it when you, I mean, how do you know you are doing well? Because you've been, like, I know people have come to you. Some people have come through this program to you that you've been talking to. How do you measure, because it's not like you are, you are mining gold and you have yes. 20,000 metric tons that you can sell, all right? So how does uh, Busara Africa know that they are making impact? How do they know that they are doing well beyond the bottom line? Mm, so there's two ways, huh? Mm -hmm. Because we work both with individual leaders mm -hmm. and we work with organizations, particularly mm -hmm. around organizational culture, team mm -hmm. building. Huh? Mm -hmm. At the individual level, particularly mm -hmm. when I do coaching and leadership development, mm -hmm. people will definitely be able to tell you, oh my goodness, Taka, mm -hmm. what an impact. Mm -hmm. But also for a lot of the work that we do, we have measures to, 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 for companies to do their return on investment. Huh? So for instance, how were people behaving before? Huh? And what was the leadership practice afterwards? Mm -hmm. But it's often the testimonials at the individual mm -hmm. level where mm -hmm. people will say, wow. And we've worked, I've been doing this now, Bernard, can you imagine, almost 10 years. In huh? Ghana? Yes, wow. in Ghana. Huh? Wow. And so people will tell, one of our, our program associate now, mm -hmm. it, Robert, is somebody who I trained nine years ago. So he wow. says, I benefited from the leadership. Then he was, yeah. he, he's gone on to be country director, amnesty. Yeah. So those kinds of impacts, those testimonials are powerful. Mm. At a company level, what we tend to find is we have return clients. Yeah. Yeah? So companies we've worked with one year, they work yeah. on key issues, then mm. they come back and say, okay, this has shifted. And a lot of our global clients mm. are that way. Yeah? Okay. They'll come back on one issue and say, we're working on this because often we find that organizational culture, mm. changing business models, mm. these are not one-time things. Mm. These are things that you're constantly working on over a period of time. So I have a couple more questions for no. you. When I, when I talk to companies, uh, maybe they are going to talk about something, yeah. they will say one of their biggest challenges is that when they invest in people, people don't stay. So uh -huh. almost every company I go to and we talk about it, how do you keep your people? So like we've identified this young person, paid for them to learn the skill, they become so good, so it's a programmer, and then they get poached, and they get worried, and they wonder whether the solution is to not invest in people, or to invest in so many people, and then even if some people leave, okay, that's the first question. The second question is, I, I, when I speak to people who are much younger than myself, they see the workplace differently. So I was born in the 80s, mm. and for us, I'm not, I may be generalizing, but we sort of be very loyal. Yes. When I speak to the younger people, they feel, you know what, I want to do my own thing, I want to do the gigs, so like I can kind of do three hours for you and do my own thing. And I feel they are more confident that way. And I'm not sure whether it's just a sign of their generation, the way the opportunities, or whether the companies are doing something wrong. 
No, there, in mm. fact, let me mm. start with the latter. Mm -hmm. What you're seeing is a reflection of the changing world of work. Mm -hmm. huh? So what the younger people are recognizing mm. is that you can get a much more rewarding professional experience and better financial income where you're doing different gigs. Mm. You're doing different things. You're not stuck in one particular room. Mm. So it's not that as companies we're doing anything wrong. Okay. What, what's incumbent upon us mm. is to be flexible enough like to say, if these are the services we need, if this is the talent we need, how do I structure uh, our, how, how do I structure our systems? So that so we can th benefit from the person and let them also... Exactly. Do yeah. other things. Huh? I get it. What are our accountability mechanisms? How do I hold them accountable? Mm. How do I pay them? Huh? All of those things. So it's us. It's about us it's our, flexible. It's our job to make sure they can, we can, they can give of their best but still be fulfilled. That's exactly I it. Like huh? that. Which turns to the retention issue. Huh? Mm -hmm. If we are assuming retention is only about keeping people mm. for five, ten years, then we're, lo we're losing the plot. Mm. It's about while they're there, being as fulfilled as possible right. and creating a learning organization mm -hmm. so that if you do have a lot of people coming in, it's quick to learn and pick I, up. I like that. Huh? And that you also have a culture where you're e it's easy to attract. Mm. The more you have a culture where it's easy to attract, mm. they're probably also going to stay longer. That's probably the entry into a different book. You launched a book recently, though. Just yes. to, um, what's the title? When can we get the book? Okay, so it's Leadership in Africa Redefined. Yes. Okay, and you can find it at um, Shell Signboard, okay. Video Bookshops. Okay. And yeah, those are the, and of course on Amazon online. Wonderful. Yes. Taka, it's always a pleasure having you oh, on the show. Likewise, Bernard. Taka is with Busara Africa. She's talking to us about leading self in the new world of work, but we, we touched on many things. Uh, if you like the video, click and share. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next time with another program. See you next time. Bye-bye.